Hey guys, so today we're gonna understand events in React. You know, the, the on click event, the on change event, and how to actually pass parameters to those events so we can change the state. And ultimately, we're gonna understand how two-way binding works in React. And by the way, if you're not following this entire series on React, you can do so. I'll provide a link to the playlist here so you can follow it. And welcome to TechSit Tutorials. All right, so let's start a brand new project. Uh, create React app, and the name of the project would be React uh, Two Way Binding. And this should create a shell project with some template features. All right, so the project has been created. So if I go inside the source folder, the first thing I'm going to do is when it creates this project, it has some garbage, uh, well, some something that it adds by default. Just gonna remove it so that it's not gonna obstruct with what we we're trying to achieve. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna define a state here for our component. So the state is going to be very simple. It will have a name, which is gonna be a string. Let's say tech fifth, and inside here, let's create a button. But before we create a button, let's put a break. All right, so now I'm going to have a, a button. This button can help us change the state. I'm going to say change uh, state. Now I want to have the state displayed here that we're trying to change, which is going to be bound to this state object here. So that will be a simple div. And here I can interpolate this value which is this dot state dot name, which is this right here. All right, so it's very simple. Now I'm just gonna tab this thing so it looks pretty. And now let's compile that project. So I'm gonna say npm start, and they should compile our project on, um, I believe the port 3000. All right, so I have that change state button and I have the state itself here. When I click on it, nothing happens. So now let's go back here and really write some code to, so I can change the state. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write a function that will allow me to change the state. So that function name is going to be uh, change name equal to, it's gonna be an arrow function. And inside here, um, all I'm gonna say is this dot uh, set state so this would set the new state what what I can do is just copy the state paste it here and instead of TechSith I'm going to say awesome TechSith self praising going on here if you don't mind me doing it <laughs> all right so um, but here from the button, I have to call this function so it would change the state, right? So what I'm gonna do here is on click event. So we'll say on click and inside the curly brackets, all I have to do is simply this dot um, change name. Again, I don't have to do this because if I do this, then I'm actually executing this function right here. I just need to pass a function name and then it would run when I click on it. All right, so let's see if it works. So if I save it, oh, actually I need to do this. Um, I should not say state here. It should be simply this. And this is what happens when you copy paste too much. You also learn when you copy paste that not to copy paste. All right, so it should have compiled now. So now if I click on this button, it should say awesome text it. And I also just realized that the spelling of awesome is incorrect. Uh, pardon me for that, I am not an English major. So let's see where it is. I think it's A 
W-E-S-O-M-E. All right, so eh, this works fine, but I don't want this hard-coded name. I want to pass a name to a function and so that it would take that name and pass it to. So I want something like this. So it, it should have a new name and this should be new name, right? And I need to pass this when I click on the button. So how do I do that? So here I have this change name. Instead, there are a couple of ways to do it. So first way is I'm going to write um, an anonymous function, which would return this dot um, change name. Again, here I, I can I can execute it here because this is not really executed right away. It's actually returning this anonymous function which gets executed when I click on it. And here I can pass uh, awesome text it. Again, self-praising. Let's see if it works. All right, so if I click on here, it really works. All right, so now let's do a next step. There is a better way of doing it. So this is what we're going to call it using a non-function. Uh, okay, my function. I call myself um, spelling retard because I can't spell sometimes. Oh, which is fine, I can program, so I don't really need to spell well, thanks to the spell checker. All right, so I can have another button, and in this button, we're going to do differently. Uh, we're going to use bind. So what we can do is, previously we had something like this, uh, this dot change name, right? Now, if I want to pass parameter here, I can do something like this. So I can bind this to to this object and then I can pass the parameter here so this would be uh, awesome text if you don't if you don't know how bind works I have a tutorial on this um, I'll provide a link so I would say this is a better way bind is a better way of doing it because the first way has some issues performance issues but I'm not going to go in in too detail right now here but what I'm going to do is if I use this one and then it's not that great uh, but this one is a smiley face so we would know when we click on it all right all right so let's look at it so if I change using anonymous function then it says awesome text it and that's a sad face when I click on but it says smiley here so this should be using bind function and now if I do that it should have a bind here all right well, it works but even better way to do it is actually not just pass to the function but usually you should have some sort of input parameter so your user would type it this is still hard-coded this is not input and after that, I can have an input tag, and this should be type uh, text. And now what we're going to do is, if somebody, as somebody is typing it, it should automatically change the name. All right, so th we can have an on change event, and it pretty much works like on click. The equal to a curly bracket inside, you would pass the event name. But here, instead of change name, again, I'm going to do copy paste. I'm going to call this change name from input. Okay, so we can see it. So I can here I can say this dot change name from input. Now, how do I really pass whatever I'm changing? So the way it, way it works is by default, it passes your whichever element that you are actually changing. Um, there is a default parameter called event. Okay, so this event would hold whatever, wherever I'm calling it from. 
All right, so in this case, it's the input. This event has target, which is this, and then it has a value, which is whatever the value of this input box is. So let's see how it works. So now I have this input box, and I'm going to type uh, awesome text it works. If I click here, it works. If I click here, it works. But what I really want is when I come here, I want whatever the, so if I refresh this, I want this name here. So I want two-way binding so that this should be already here and then I can change it. So for that, what I need to do is, so this is the two-way binding part. The value equal to um, this should be the value that the state holds. So all I have to say is this dot state, this D A T E dot name. So now if I save this and I already have this text here, and here I also have text. Now if I just add one, I change this here. If I can remove this and say awesome, it says awesome. So this is how it works. So it's pretty cool. Now one thing to remember is that whenever you have this value, you must have this on change. Uh, because you're binding the value to the, the state, and you should also have this change. If I don't do that, then it would give me an error. So if I remove this for momentarily, and now if I it won't even let me change anything. And you would you would have an error if I if I look at inspect the element. Uh, there's an error here. It says uh, you provided a value without on change handle. So that's what you need to do. By the way, I'm going to save this project and upload it to my GitHub site, and I'll provide the uh, the the URL in the description so you can play around with it. I, this should not be that confusing, but if you have questions, feel free to ask me. So I hope you learned something from this tutorial. And if you did, please, uh, you can help me three different ways. You can obviously like and uh, provide a comment and subscribe. Or you can um, support the channel via Patreon. And you can also translate the video for me in your native language. I'll provide the link in the description. Thank you.